The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater, you have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence. What is this light? What is this light? Uh, I'd like to start with a, with a very interesting fact which makes us think about the gift of the Christian community to which we belong. And I'd like us this week just to quietly ponder and meditate on why is it so beneficial for us individually to worship God on Sundays together and pray in our homes on a regular basis? Why is it so important? And what has to do it with our mission? I found a very interesting, uh, I mean, it's full of very interesting data, but I found a very interesting passage uh, in the book, The Lonely Century, A Call to Reconnect. Uh, I hope I find it. It's on page 20. Um, there is a community in Israel, an Orthodox Jewish community. The point is not, not that it's in Israel and it's an Orthodox Jewish community, but the data what they found. According to every medical measurement, this community lives in terms of eating in the most unhealthy way. So their life expectancy should be well, well below, not only the national average, but below the world average. Um, despite their lifestyle, uh, unhealthy lifestyle in terms of diet, they are a very happy community. 73% of this community describe their health as very good compared with only 50% of other groups. Their life expectancy is higher than the average. Um, their diet, as mentioned, isn't the only unhealthy aspect of their lifestyle. Despite living in a country that has an average of 288 days of sunshine a year, this group is seriously deprived of vitamin D because their body is always covered. It uh, gets hardly any sunshine because of their dressing code. They are not financially secure either, so there should be lots of pressure in their lives. Often they are jobs which are not the most well paid. And because men are the bread, uh, uh, women are the bread, uh, bread runners in the family, because men dedicate themselves to the study of the Torah, you can imagine that their income is really low. They tend to work longer hours than others. Given these indicators, one would expect this community to have shorter life expectancy than that of the general population. But, fascinatingly, their life is longer 
than the average population, than secular Jewish people. Uh, what is the explanation for this? One, on one hand, they are practicing their religion. They are very devout people. They are pray on a regular basis. They dedicate, men dedicate at least half of their working hours uh, to their tradition, to learn about their religion and sacred texts. But the secret is that it's a very closely knit community. They are caring for children. They spend lots of time together. Physical touch, physical proximity is very intense. They just live as perhaps our ancestors lived in the old days, paying attention to each other, living together, praying together, volunteering together, studying together, working together. They spend the Sabbath, the day of the Lord, together. Why I'm quoting uh, 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 this data and some others? Because the real challenge which our population is facing today is loneliness and isolation and the health consequences of this. I was very shocked to learn that People who feel abandoned, excluded, isolated, who feel alone, who suffer from loneliness, their body reacts in the same way as in normal situation we react to a sudden stress. When a dog attacks us, just a very bad example, or uh, a car almost uh, uh, crashes next to us, we got a shock and the stress hormone level goes high in our bodies. Our heart is pumping, our blood pressure is high. But when the danger is away, it disappears. But not with loneliness. Not with when, not only physically someone lives alone because uh, Many of us do that. Bereavement, being single in terms of marriage situation, or being a celibate priest. Uh, but when the core of our soul feels isolated, well, it is where our soul is gasping for meeting someone. When people's soul is in full pain, that there is no regular interaction, that they, they can't feel that they, they are being loved and cared for. The stress, unnoticed, remains very high in the body. What does it have to do with our Sunday worship? Actually quite a lot. But still one more data. In 2008, the government made financial cuts and they started with closing down public libraries. Not simply reducing stuff, they started it before, but between 2008 and 18, in this country, physically, 30% almost one-third of all the public libraries were closed. One-third of youth centers and community centers were closed. And we can hear how overstretched is the NHS. So we can see that we are so privileged, and particularly the elderly generation who lived in a world which which was far more closely knit than today. Because we live in a world when even our attention is 
stolen by gadget telephones and daily tasks on the computer. So you inherited the, the culture of the community. And as children grow up, they start their life, they fly out from the home, and we, when we are getting older, we run our households alone. Often we live alone, husband and wife, or if we are bereaved, just alone. But still, we belong to a community, a worshipping community. And it remains unnoticed, but worshipping God on a regular basis. Just like uh, playing a chord on a guitar, when the, when the strings start to vibrate. A Sunday worship is like a chord, a beautiful chord. It starts vibrating in us. It's getting quieter and quieter, but by next Sunday we come back. So our body and our soul resonates to the life of the church. And the Eucharist, what we celebrate together, when we receive the Holy Communion, what happens? Jesus forgives our sins, our small mistakes. Uh, it gives a boost to our body. It nourishes our soul and prayer life. But also what happens unnoticed when we eat the body of Christ and drink the blood of Christ, he enters into our body, almost like as a stress relief of the stress which all of us are facing, regardless of living alone or not, in this very busy world. It has tremendous health benefit physically and uh, spiritually. I always encourage us to, to pray at home and to to pray aloud, to pray the Hail Mary, which is in our mass paper, it was left there deliberately, or even just reading the gospel or the readings from a mass paper aloud at home. Or if you manage to join in our service online, sing, or from your Bible, singing the Psalms, resonating while singing, because this brings us health, and goodness and joy. So let us appreciate the community to which we belong, but also let us see our call that without Christians, without worshipping communities, where can people learn the genuine sense of belonging? Without the church, how can one's soul say that I am never alone, I am never abandoned, I am being prayed for, I am being cared for, just as we pray for those who are on our sick list. It means to them a lot. Let us also receive today's communion as a responsibility that we are responsible for the community what we create. So it is our call to preserve the secret of the joy of community life. And this is our joy being together. In the coming week, when we sing a song or when we are just humming a melody, just let us think of our Lord who is present in our bodies, in our life streams, in our minds, in our souls, all week to give us that extra boost, boost which keeps us healthy physically and spiritually. Amen.